We've said before that the columns of a transformation matrix are the axes of the new basis vectors of the mapping in my coordinate system. We're now going to spend a little while looking at how to transform a vector from one set of basis vectors to another. Let's say I have two new basis vectors that describe the world of panda bear here, and panda's world is orange. So panda's got a, a first a basis vector there, and then another basis vector there, say. And let's say in my world, panda bear's basis vectors are at 3, 1, and are at 1, 1. And my, uh, my basis vectors here are e1 hat equals 0, 1 for, sorry, for e2 hat, and e1 hat is equal to 1, 0. So those are my basis vectors, and the orange ones are panda's basis vectors. Now, uh, and so panda's basis vectors, it, it, the first one for panda is his 1, 0, and the first one, the second one, is 0, 1 in panda's world. So bear's basis vectors are 3, 1 and 1, 1 in my blue frame. That is, I can write down Bayer's transformation matrix as 3, 1, 1, 1. Now, let's take some vector I want to transform. Let's say that vector is, in Bayer's world, is the vector uh, a half of 3, 1 in Bayer's world. So it's 3 over 2, 1 over 2. So the instruction there is do uh, 3 over 2 of 3, 1, and then do 1 over 2, a half, of 1, 1 in my frame, if you like. So in my world, that's going to give me the answer of 3 times 3 over 2 plus 1 times 1 over 2 is 9, 10 halves, which is 5. And 1 times 3 over 2 plus 1 times a half, so that's a total of 2. So that's the vector 5, 2 in my world, 5, 2. Those two are the same things. So this is Bear's vector, and this is my vector. So this transformation matrix here are Bear's basis in my coordinates in my coordinate system. So that transforms Bayer's vectors into my world, um, which is a bit of a, a problem. You know, usually I'd want to translate my world into Bayer's world. So we need to figure out how to go the other way. So my next question is, how do I perform that reverse process? Well, it's going to involve the inverse. So if I call Bayer's transformation matrix B, I'm going to want B inverse, which is b to the minus 1. And the inverse of this matrix, well, it's actually pretty easy. We can write down the inverse of that matrix pretty easily. It's going to be a half of 1, 3, flip the elements on the leading diagonal, and put a minus on the off-diagonal terms. And we can see the determinant of that's 3 minus 1 is 2, so we divide by the determinant of a half. So that's going to be b to the minus 1. And that's the uh, my basis vectors in Bayer's coordinates. So that's my basis in Bear, in Bear's world. So my 1, 0 is going to be a half of 1 minus 1 in Bear's system, and my 0, 1 is going to be a half of minus 1, 3 in Bear's system. And we can verify that this is true if we take this guy, a half 1 minus 1, and compose it with Bayer's vectors. We've got uh, 1 plus minus 1 of those is going to give me 3 plus 1 is uh, 3 minus 1 is 2, 1 minus 1 is 0, so that's 2, 0, halve it gives you 1, 0. So that really does work. If I take a half 1 minus 1 of Bayer's vectors, I get my unit vector. Okay, so that really does do the reverse thing. So then if I take my vector, which was 5, 2, 
uh, and then I do that sum, I should get uh, the world in Baer's basis. So I've got five times uh, a half minus a half using that guy, plus two times uh, minus one, three, and that will give me uh, a half of three, two, when I multiply it all out. And if I do the same thing here, I've got five uh, times one, minus one times two, gives me three over two, gives me three over two. It all works out. If you do it that way, or if you do it that way, you still get that answer. So that's uh, Bear's vector. Again, which is the vector we started out with. So that's how you do the reverse process. You need to, if you want to take Bear's vector into my world, you need Bear's basis in my coordinate frame. And if you want to do the reverse process, you want my basis in Bear's coordinate frame. That's probably quite counterintuitive. So let's try another example where this time Bear's world is going to be an orthonormal basis vector set. So here's our basis vectors at 1, 0, and 0, 1 in my world in blue. And Bear's world is in orange, Bear's world, and Bear's world has uh, 1, 1 times, and I've made it unit length, so it's 1 over root 2, and minus 1, 1, again, the unit lengths are 1 over root 2, so they're those two. And those you can do a dot product to verify that those two are at 90 degrees to each other. And they're Bear's vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1. So that's, then I can write down Bear's uh, transformation matrix that transforms a vector of Bear's. Now, if I've got the vector in Bear's world that's 2, 1, then I can write that down, and I will therefore get the vector in my world. So when I multiply that out, what I get is I'll get 1 over root 2 times 2 minus 1, which is 1. And then 1 times 2 plus uh, 1 times 1 gives me 3. So in my world, the vector is, as I've written down, 1 over root 2 times 1, 3. So if I want to do the reverse transformation, I need b to the minus 1. Um, and b to the minus 1 is actually quite easy. Because this is uh, an orthonormal basis, the determinant of this matrix is 1. So it all becomes quite easy. Um, so I just get 1 over root 2, keep the leading terms the same, flip the sign of the off diagonal terms, because it's a 2 by 2 matrix. That's so really simple. And if you go and put that in, if you say, uh, if I take 1 over root 2 times 1 minus 1, so I take one of those plus one of those, uh, divide by, uh, multiply by root 2, I do in fact get 1, 0, and the same for 0, 1. It all works. Um, so then if I take uh, the vector in my world, this vector in my world, uh, which is 1, 3, and multiply it out, then what I get is the vector in Bear's world, so that's 1 plus 3, which is 4, 1, uh, so minus 1 plus 3 is 2, and I've got 1 over root 2 times 1 over root 2, so that's a half. So in Bear's world, this vector is 2, 1, which is what we originally said, so it really works. Now this was all prep, really, for the fun part, which is, uh, we said before in the vectors module, that uh, we could do this just by using projections if the new basis vectors were orthogonal, which these are. So let's see how this works with projections. So let's try it with projections. What we said before was that if I take my version of the vector and dot it with uh, Bear's axis, so the first of Bear's axes is that in my world, then I will get the answer of the vector in Bear's world. So that gives me uh, 1 over root 2 times 1 over root 2, which is a half, of 1 plus 3, which is 4. So that gives me 2. And that's going to be the first component of Bayer's vector because it's the first of Bayer's uh, axes. And I can do it again with the other of Bayer's axes. So that's 1 over root 2, 1, 3. That's the vector in my world, with the other of Bayer's axes, which is 1 over root 2 times minus 1, 1. And when I do that dot product, what I'll get, the 1 over root 2s will multiply to give me a half again, and I've got 1 times minus 1 plus 3 times 1 
is a total of 2, which is 1. And that's Baer's vector, notice, 2, 1. So I've used projections here to translate my vector to Baer's vector just using the dot product. Now remember, with the vector product, um, what I'd have to do is I'd have to remember to normalize when I did the multiplication by Baer's vectors. I'd have to normalize by their lengths, but in this case, their lengths are 1. So it's actually really easy. Um, so we don't have to do the complicated matrix maths. We can just use the dot product if Baer's vectors are orthogonal. Now there is one last thing. If you try this with the example we did before with Baer's vectors of 3, 1 and 1, 1, so before we had those being Baer's vectors. If you try the dot product with those, because they're not orthogonal to each other, it won't work. Uh, and give it a go for yourself and verify that, that it really won't work, that they need to be orthogonal for this to work. If you have them not being orthogonal, you can still do it with the matrix transformation. You just can't do it with the dot product.